Hi there, and welcome back to this video series on using the early notation typesetter. In this episode, we'll be looking at typesetting a piece of music. So to start off, um, one option, of course, you have for viewing a, something for typesetting is to open it in something like Adobe Acrobat here. I have it over here on my uh, second monitor. If you don't have a second monitor um, or you want to have a more compact view here, you should definitely check out the new PDF viewer located under the File tab under View. When you hit this, you'll get the option to load a PDF. This isn't uploaded to the server or anything. It's just locally opening it um, in a little window here. So I'll choose the PDF I want. Just something from IMSLP. I can scroll down here. You'll notice you can resize this as you wish. Um, if it's sized too small by default, you won't get any controls, by the way. So if the controls don't show up, just drag it down until they do. Um, and I want to go to page 24. I have a scroll bar over here we can use. All right. Okay, so I want to retypeset this nice little short one over here just as a quick example. And we have a ligature in here, so I can show you some of that. So one of the common features of a lot of early music is having an indent at the beginning with some type of uh, decorated character or sometimes just a large capital, um, which is the first letter of the text. Now, even in some cases we have instrumental music, you'll often see some type of ornament there. Um, and we're working to implement um, those sorts of features um, in Ent as well in the future. So stay tuned for stuff like that. Um, and if you're interested in that, consider supporting the project um, so we can end up adding things like that. So the first thing I'll want to do is to insert some type of blank there. I can always come back in a PDF editor or some type of other software and add that A as needed. So I'm going to insert some blanks. I'll go over to symbols so I can, I can show you where these are. Down at the bottom of our symbols, we'll have to scroll down here or use the uh, scroll bar. You can see we have spacers and blanks. Spacers and blanks are symbols that um, space out the music. And these are in um, calculated uh, widths. They're at particular ratios to each other. Um, and we have so I can show you some large spacers, some medium spacers, some small spacers, and some tiny spacers. Blanks are the exact same way. We have um, our large blanks, which you can see move, they seem to move the cursor. So there's the actual blank right there. So if I insert two of those large blanks, you can see it's getting highlighted there when I press the hotkey. Um, you know, maybe we'll do three and, and that'll look good for this particular example. Now we need to answer our G clef. And this one uses, um, this is actually, this book is one of the sources that we used for this particular font. So there's the exact uh, clef right there. Now there's two different ways we can think about spacers. You can either A, let ENT handle all the spacer stuff, or B, you can manually insert the spacers as you need them. Let's just start out by letting ENT do it automatically, and when we get to the end of the line, I'll come back and do some tweaking. So let's go ahead and enter our time signature. I can select it and click to enter it. Okay, now the first thing we have is a rest here. So over here we have our toggle to switch between spaces and or notes and rests. Um, and you'll see that's uh, shown with the space hotkey. So if I press space, we jump between those two 
um, palettes. So with the rest palette selected, I'm looking for one of these. And you can almost just do this with pattern matching. Um, and I switch back to go back to our notes. So our first note is a uh, semi-brief. I have that selected and I'm going to put it up there and click to enter. Now I want to enter a minim, so I select the minim and click to enter it down there. Brief, minim, minim, minim. Now we need a dot. You can press period on the keyboard just like most other notation software and then click to enter that dot. You do need to click to, it won't automatically enter it because it doesn't know exactly where you want it. Um, and then now we have semi minims. So I go semi minim, semi minim, semi minim. And here's a good passage where we have this kind of scalar motion. Um, so I'm going to use keyboard entry for this. Remember, up and down arrow keys. So I'll enter this note by hitting the right arrow key, and then I'll hit down, right arrow key. Now I have a minim, so I press 4 to select the minim, down arrow key, right arrow key, dot for a dot, period for a dot, right arrow key, back to the semi minim, down, right arrow key, se uh, semi brief, right arrow key, minim, down, right arrow key, semi brief, right arrow key, right arrow key, minim, right arrow key. Okay, hold up, we have a ligature. So let me uh, right click here or hit escape to go back into um, edit mode. We don't need to, I just typically do that when I need to go dig around in panels. So this is the ligature menu. Now I'll be explaining this in quite a bit more detail in a dedicated ligature menu review. Um, but just to give you the basic gist of it, these are all the components of individual components of a ligature, right? We have kind of this brief um, or square with no stem. Um, then we have uh, longa or square with stem on both the after and before. Uh, then we have this sort of um, stemless maxima, you could say, um, and then the maxima with the stem, uh, both after and before. There's also a button here for if you need to enter two consecutive ligatures, you press this between the ligatures and it puts in a teeny tiny spacer um, just so the program knows that those are two separate ligatures and doesn't try to conjoin them. Then down here we have a completely new button we haven't seen before. This uh, switches the direction of the stems. So stem down, stem up, stem down, stem up. Note that we also still have the, excuse me, um, coloration button, which will uh, color these ligatures if we need to. So we need to enter a uh, stem down and then a stemless note. So I'll hit, and this uh, can be done with the forward slash, just like most notation programs for reversing stems, it's uh, forward slash. Uh, and we want to enter one of these. So you'll notice I can click to enter it. And now I need without a stem. So there it is, click to enter. And we're done with the ligature. So I can go up here, I can scroll down, we can see what our next line is supposed to be. I'm just gonna right click here uh, to go back into edit mode just for simplicity. Um, and now we need to go back and enter uh, more notes. So I can either go up here and click to switch back into notes, or I can just hit the space bar and it jumps back into our notes and rests. You can use the uh, tilde key or accent to switch back into uh, entering a ligature, and you can also press that again to sort of deselect ligature mode. So there's sort of two ways to do it. Um, all right, so we need to go ahead and enter a semi-brief. So I hit five here, 
and I'll do this passage using the mouse for a while. So there it is. Um, actually, I'll do this only mouse so you can see exactly where you would want to move your cursor. So now we need a rest. So we need one of these, or sorry, one of these. And then back to notes. We need, now you'll notice over here there are two different um, sharps and flats here. There are these ones under what's called accidental and these ones under what's called modifier. I'll be going to, into modifiers a bit later, um, but basically these are written accidentals and these are ficta. So these um, appear above or below a note. So like if, if there's something that uh, needs a ficta for whatever reason, I can click that and I can enter it and I can move my cursor around and select where I want that. Anyway, um, I want to, I don't want to enter that. I want to put down a raise or sharp or um, durum symbol. So I'll click on it and enter that. You'll notice this um, seems to wiggle a little as I'm moving it up and down. That's because in most of these fonts, they actually use a slightly different looking character uh, for rests, whether they're on a space or a line. So these are some of the things that we've replicated in the software um, to get an exact uh, replica of how it looks in real life. So let's go back to minims. And I said I would do this using the mouse. So I'm just selecting the node I want and clicking it into place. Now let's uh, switch over and we'll do keyboard only. So I'll, I'll describe what I'm doing here since uh, you can't see my keyboard. So I'm right here. I need two semi minims. So I'll click three for semi minim and then I'll just hit the right arrow key twice and that'll insert that twice. Now I need a semi brief. So I hit five, I hit the up arrow key because it's up a uh, up a space and then I hit the right arrow key to enter that. Now we have two minims same spot two more right arrow keys. Down two more right arrow keys. We got a semi brief, semi brief one way up here and he gets a dot and then three minims to end the line. Scroll down we're almost done so I'll hit enter here. Now I need a, I'll go back to the hybrid method. So I, I'll be selecting my notes using the keyboard and I'll be clicking them into place with the mouse. This is typically what I end up doing uh, when I'm using end. So I'll click to enter our note. Ooh, we have a brief, very nice. I need a dot for him. And then three minims and up and a dot. And finally, our longa, and we are at the end. Um, so as I mentioned in the previous video, uh, we can insert a piece ending mark, a double bar there. Uh, and now we have the matter of replicating uh, this fill in here. So we'll go down to our spacers here. Now, blanks are these blanks. Spacers are just bits of uh, staff. So I can hit uh, P here and get a very long one. It looks like they're sort of using like a medium like that. If you don't find that too attractive, you can just use longer ones. And I'll fill it out a good amount. We'll see how that looks. Oh, it's maybe a little bit too spaced apart. So I'll go in here and insert a few more of these until it gets about where I'm happy. And if you want to be really... Uh, industrious about this you can actually like try to line it up exactly and um, etc so in the next video um, i'll go through and i'll show you how to use the manual spacers and a few tweaks to try to clean this up a bit 
For now, let's just take a look at what we have. We can go in the File tab and hit Print Preview, or I can hit the W hotkey at any time and take a look at our music so far. That's looking pretty good. Well, I'll see you in the next video. We'll clean this up um, and make it look real nice. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.